What to Play presents the top 10 PC indies of the last three months, all arranged by play scores. The play score is an average of gamer and critic ratings. At number 10 is Dark. This is an indie horror game that feels like a trip inside Tim Burton's creative world. Dark's gloomy atmosphere takes you into a bizarre world filled with horrors. The game's story revolves around a young kid with the ability to remain conscious while dreaming. All this turns into a freak show when the nightmares start happening. Throughout the game, you will not only outrun these strange creatures, you also get to solve numerous puzzles by manipulating time and space. Most of the critics, including GameSpot, appreciated the game's creative puzzle designs, giving it a 7, saying that they are incredibly satisfying to solve on your first playthrough, each one building upon the last in intelligent ways. It kinda plays like little nightmares with a bit of limbo in between. The game is fun considering its short game length of just 3 hours. And aside from that, the game stumbles with its broken stealth sections. IGN critiqued on that saying that Dark has some frustrating stealth encounters and an overabundance of jump scares. It receives a play score of an 8.10. At number 9 is Dicey Dungeons. Indie games try their damnedest to deviate from other mainstream titles. Dicey Dungeons is unlike any other game out there. It manages to mix two different things into one game, dice and cards. So how does this game even work? So with your luck and your ability to read, Simply lead a hulking walking dice in a roguelike adventure where deck building and a bit of luck is key. Proceed to its randomly generated dungeons that pits you with a variety of monsters, mythological or not. And the further you go, the crazier the enemies are and the rarer the loot, just like most roguelike games. One of the game's best features lies in its content, where every aspect of it feels like it could have been a different game. We Got Discovered gave it a 9 out of 10, praising it, saying that there are enough ideas here for three whole games, and seemingly nothing was sacrificed in order to implement them. But much like any other roguelike adventures, it heavily relies on its randomly generated events, causing a bit of repetition in its presentation. Relying on luck may not be enough and players might suffer a few difficulty bumps along the way. So GameSpot gave it a 7, stating that, Dicey Dungeons is a charming and often rewarding game, as long as you learn to accept that sometimes the dice won't roll your way. But if you're into roguelikes like Slade Aspire, this game is for you. It has a play score of an 8.14. At number 8 is Blazing Chrome, definitely a nod for the legendary classics like Contra and Metal Slug. This testosterone-fueled run-and-gun action game places you in the heat of every battle for humanity. Set in a dystopian world where machines are taking over, it's up to you and your pal to save this godforsaken Earth, Terminator style. The game embraces the retro visuals similar to the days of old. Utilize the futuristic weapons of the future and take down massive hordes of metallic monsters with ease. Critic Handsome Phantom praised the game, calling it a must-buy and giving it an 8 out of 10 saying that Blazing Chrome is boasting challenging run-and-gun gameplay, an impressive amount of replayability, and an unmatched level of nostalgia. It's an obvious pandering to nostalgia-given players, but that's not a bad thing since Blazing Chrome knows how to pay homage to the fantastic titles. It's the ideal couch co-op game where you can simply blast some foes with your friend. It receives a play score of an 8.20. And so, I was born. Number 7 is Horus. Like any other great indie games, Horus is an adorable platformer with a story about a small robot with big dreams. Made by two talented developers, their intention was to create a game reminiscent to the iconic classics and adding it with a bit of English flair. Inspired by the works of the legendary Douglas Adams, embrace the life of an ambitious android with a knack for humanity. Live a fascinating robotic life and enjoy 15 hours of character-driven adventure from start to finish. To be together again. TSA Gamer admires the game's 80s and 90s atmosphere, which heavily influences its score of a 9 out of 10. He said that it may not be as immediately impressive as the latest AAA blockbuster, but Horus is essentially for fans of retro games or hard platformers. 
The game serves as a stark reminder on how the gaming industry continues to evolve over the years. Horus is a modern classic with a play score of an 8.33. Number 6 is Children of Morta. This indie game is trying to break that conventional one character per adventure kind of trope in most RPGs. Instead of using a single hero, you take control of an entire family of heroes. 11-Bit Studios' Children of Morta is a love child between The Incredibles and Diablo. It's a roguelite game where you go hacking and slashing through an ever-changing dungeon filled with monsters and mayhem. And as a whole pack of related individuals lead the Bergsons in their quest to find epic loot despite their flaws and differences. We Got Discovered gave this game a 9 out of 10, saying that Children of Morta delivers an exceptional experience with superior gameplay and a surprising amount of heart. For its story, it does deliver it quite well, exuding nothing but themes of love and hope for this thrill-seeking family. And lastly, hardcore gamers Jordan Helm praises the game's gameplay, saying that, like Dead Cells before it, is addictive, well-orchestrated, and a brilliantly devised take on the roguelike template. He gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And as for our play scores, it receives an 8.39. Number 5 is Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom. It took them a while, but finally it's out. This spiritual successor to the iconic Metroidvania classic, Wonder Boy, is a fantastic game that reimagines the old adventure into brand new heights. Help Monster Boy Jin overcome his fears and explore a magical world teeming with secrets and deadly monsters. And just like Wonder Boy, you transform into six various forms with unique abilities to traverse around its cursed lands. The game is beautiful. Its hand-drawn animations would immediately catch your eyes, taking you into its vibrant kingdom. GameSpot's Alexander Pan gave it an 8 out of 10, praising the game's homage to the original Wonder Boy saying that by refining the solid foundations of its spiritual predecessors with modern affordances, it becomes a rich platforming adventure in its own right. It is a well-loved Metroidvania game, and even Spanish reviewer 3D Wegos gave it a 9 out of 10. The game receives a play score of an 8.44. Number 4 is Streets of Rogue. Embrace chaos in this roguelite game about a group of anarchic individuals. Played in a top-down perspective, it takes inspiration from popular titles with the same nature such as The Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne. And amidst its pixelated madness, Streets of Rogue boasts an addicting gameplay where you have the freedom to approach every level in your own ways. Want to throw a toilet at someone, causing them to get poisoned from the filthy water? Then take a pill and turn into a giant? And trample their home to pieces? You're a monster. Do you want to go on a bloody rampage? Or you just want to mess around society by hacking computers? It's all up to you. PC Gamer gave it an 8.4 saying that this game is a flexible roguelike with more than enough playstyles to keep you coming back. It's the perfect indie game to test your chaotic inhibitions. Experiment all you want until you get tired of seeing the same thing happening again and again. Even Spanish reviewer Vandal gave this game an 8. And as for our play score, it receives a strong 8.51. At third place is Oxygen Not Included. Clay's latest survival simulation game is one of this year's biggest surprises, especially for die-hard Don't Starve Together fans and to those who simply adore the endless joy of survival games. Oxygen Not Included takes you to a sci-fi colony where your job as an overseer is to make sure everything is in check to keep your humans alive. But it's not an easy task. Everything in its hostile planet is trying to kill you. Master science, the arts, and even resource management because the game is constantly trying to mess you up. Metro's Game Central gave it a solid 8, saying that it is a funny, clever, and extremely complex mix of management simulator and survival game that manages to make abject failure almost as entertaining as success. Throughout your non-stop surviving, the game has its funny moments, reminding you not to take itself too seriously. It's a major success, even Game Reactor gave it an 8, praising the game's attention to detail. 
it receives a play score of an 8.64. At second place is A Short Hike. Compared to all the hardcore nature of the other indie titles on this list, A Short Hike is a stress-free journey where you simply walk around a colorful world admiring its many, many wonders. The path you take depends on you, and it's up to you to find out where it leads. It's as straightforward as its game title. There are no boss fights to face, no rare items to collect, or even monsters to fight. It's just a short hike. Thumbsticks Tom Baines gave it a 9, admiring the developer's passion for this beautiful game, saying that what began as an act of self-care for the game's developer has blossomed into a welcome respite from the modern world that everyone should experience. And throughout your journey, you'll be accompanied by a relaxing soundtrack to fit the current mood of your adventure. It's simply breathtaking. Destructoid's Kevin Merzero gave it a 7.5, saying that a short hike is far from perfect, but it absolutely is unique and worth your time. So it's nice to take a little break every once in a while. It receives a play score of an 8.79. And the best indie game on the PC for the last three months is Gorn. It's surprising to see a VR title on the number one spot in an indie list, and it's the complete opposite of a short hike's pleasant and peaceful tale. Gorn is a ridiculously violent VR game where you live your life as a gladiator trying to reach the highest ranks. It features realistic physics so you can creatively eviscerate your opponents in its classic medieval combat. It does kind of sound too violent, but at least Gorn's semi-cartoony designs make it less gory. At least the devs know how to have fun. Upload VR praised the game's presentation and gameplay, giving it an 8.5, saying that Gorn feels like it's a toy box filled with razor-sharp playthings and endless action figures to use them on. There's no groundbreaking innovation here but it's enough for us to bring out our inner Russell Crowe as we smash and bludgeon our enemy skulls to victory. Are you not entertained? Game Skinny even gave it a 9 out of 10, appreciating the game's humor and challenge, saying that Gorn is challenging, horrifying, hilarious, and a genuine joy to play. It's obvious this game is fun with friends, and it receives a play score of an 8.80.